Well, Merry Christmas, everybody. This will be our final entry of The First Darkness. We have truly had a wonderful time talking with you, interacting with all of you, interacting with the people uh, who have been a part of our discussion today. Florence, who's in the beautiful yellow, and Shelly, who's in the candy stripe, red and white, and myself. We're going to uh, finish up uh, the, the first darkness. We're going to cover the, the conclusion of the first darkness. And then we'll share with you uh, some books that uh, we're going to cover, a book that we're going to cover next. So let's get started and let's work toward the conclusion of this fantastic book, this sci-fi thriller, this science fact thriller, First Darkness. So we pick up in chapter 28, Florence and, and, and uh, Shelley, uh, about the battle. Um, we're in, we began in the home of Dr. Gibson, and he has uh, a guest there, and he is called the Creator. And Dr. Gibson, Rodaire, and a few others are, are there talking, and we have this interesting conversation um, with between Rodaire and the Creator. And so Rodaire is really struggling because he's an angel, he's a gatherer, and he's used to um, dealing with the Creator from uh, his celestial point of view, from the celestial throne, if you will. And so he's looking and he's kind of just figuring this out. The Creator has taken on the form, the human form of an elderly black man. Mm -hmm. And Rodaire, who's the angel, is not, is trying to figure out why would you take on, you know, you're the creator of the heavens and the earth. Why would you take on such a form? And what is it so, you know, profound about humans? And this is really, this is, this is really has the angel perturbed. Uh, how did y'all take this particular uh, conversation dialogue between Rodaire and the creator? Um, I think one of the uh, things that I noticed was when the Creator told him, well, Rodaire was saying that he didn't know how to describe the way that he was feeling. Mm -hmm. And Rodaire said that, I mean, uh, the Creator told him that what you're feeling, the word that you're looking for to describe it is jealousy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, mm -hmm. You know, he told them that there's no no need to be jealous because he loves them the same. Mm -hmm. But I guess if we go back to when Rodaire and Anshar had to go before the Creator to find out uh, what was going on with the first darkness, they had to, you know, travel and prepare themselves to be in the presence of the Creator. But they were preparing themselves to be before him in a more pure form, you know. Um, and that was what they were used to seeing him in his, you know, total celestial form. And so they thought for him to make himself human mm -hmm. or in appearance, to come down, mm -hmm. to come and be in somebody's house where they had to go to him and stand there and let the angel scan them and say, okay, you can come in and then stand and wait for, you know. Mm -hmm. But he just came to their house. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that bothered him and made him curious and even jealous in terms of uh, this, this, I guess in the sense of that, why do humans, why are humans allowed to have such gracious appearance of God in their own form, whereas, what you're saying, whereas he has all this protocol that he has to go through. So, what is it about this that really uh, perturbs the, at least this angel or angels, period, you think? Um, no, I think, uh, I think it's the angels, these higher beings, they are used to the responsibilities. They're used to their powers. They have more of an understanding 
of things. Whereas humans are like little children. And God feels more of a need to be more closely involved in our guidance and and growth and you know to see us learn something and grow with something it's exciting just like when you have your you have children and you may have a teenager and a new baby and just because you're you get excited when the new baby is learning how to walk and learning how to talk and you you know you're right there you're on the floor with them making sure that they're not bumping their heads on anything or you know you're giving them more guidance whereas that teenager you know you're okay you know you've done this before you know what you're doing i i expect more out of you and that doesn't mean i'm any less proud when you do something but you know that's how i feel, look at the difference mm -hmm. okay. and then you know and just like with children that teenager is jealous of the amount of attention that you are giving that small child mm -hmm. you know they don't remember the time when they were getting just as much attention okay you want to add anything to what she's saying about um the jealousy that an angel may feel toward a human by the right. fact that, you know, God is actually coming in the form of a human to talk to, to interact, to interact with a human. That was a really good example um, because, you know, I, I work with children and I have several children, but, um, and to think that one is getting more attention than the other mm -hmm. could cause uh, a conflict or you know the jealousy thing so I, I agree totally with, with the example Shelly gave me. Why is it you think that the older child couldn't understand that mama or daddy or the parent has the same amount of love for the baby as the parent has for the oldest child? The oldest child hadn't lost anything. It's just the youngest child needs, as you mentioned before, maybe need a more personal attention right. than the older child. Mm -hmm. I think that that is a difficult thing to grasp until you experience it. What you mean yeah. by that? Like with, with having children, people tell you all the time, you know, you have, there's enough love for you to <laughs> share with everybody, mm -hmm. you know. And of course we, you know, think that same thing, you know, with our friends and family. But of course you don't love everybody the the same way um you know you love them all but not the same you way you love them all but but not the same way a friend of mine was was we were talking about this the other night and he said that you know sure of course you love them all just as much like when it comes yeah. to your children but you recognize the gifts in one that another may not have mm -hmm. why do you think god needs to do that? Why do you think the Creator needs to relate to the humans, or in this sense, in your, in your analogy, the youngest child that way? Why do you think there's a need for that? Well, I mean, my think, thought is that because the, you know, humans are a younger race, because that child is younger, and they need to feel that support. They need that, um, you know, like you talked about in the sermon today, they need that, that safety, that safe place that um, where their gifts and their abilities can grow and they know that, okay, somebody's taking care of me, mm -hmm. somebody's watching me, whereas, you know, higher beings, you know, you recognize your divinity, you're, you're a little bit more independent. In, in this story, you notice how um, it is an issue for all angels. Some angels got very, very upset. We read that earlier, but some angels got very, very upset by the fact of how the Creator uh, relates to lesser beings or less developed beings. The problem is, is that they don't understand the love and the grace of the Creator. That's what I was talking about last Sunday. 
people need to understand the love and the grace of the Creator. Now, let me let me allow me to put it this way. Isn't it, isn't it amazing that the same thing that you described in terms of the problem of your older child struggles with the attention that you give your younger child, and they may have feelings of jealousy. <laughs> they, may have, they, have, they may have a feeling of jealousy, mm -hmm. but that's you under, you are, you are understand this at a, at a very human level. But it was a very true feeling. It, it goes all up the scale, even to the angels. Mm -hmm. The angels, the angels, are curious about the Creator's relationship to humans. Mm -hmm. Now, let, let me allow me to put this in a context that I think that both y'all can appreciate. This is a story, this is another way of telling the story of God becoming man in the story of Jesus. Mm -hmm. God becoming man mm -hmm. in order to reach the human creation. Yeah, right. So in this story, the creator takes on the form of a black old man mm -hmm. and it causes the angels uh, to scratch their head, for lack of a better word, trying to understand that, you know, why are you doing this? Because they see God in a more grander fashion. But here's the reason. If, if we in our human bodies and understanding, if God spoke to us without taking on a lesser form, right. it would kill us. Right. Yeah. This is why it says in the Bible, no man can stand and see, stand, to stand in the face of God, stand, stand before God face to face and live. Right. People who see God die. Right, because even when the angels, when Roder and Anshar did go to see the Creator, they still could only go so far. Yeah. Right, because the Creator had developed uh, Himself to such an extent mm -hmm. that we'll go crazy trying to think about it. There's something even that happens for perfection that goes to another level of perfection. So there's growth even beyond the form of a human, beyond the form of, a, of an angel, there's the form of God. Right. I think um, I've heard Dr. Gibson speak several times about the fact that we really can't handle the level of bliss that, you know, that it will, you get it will, to it will, when, it will kill you. when you get to, you know, we, we can only take happiness in, in small, small doses. Yeah. <laughs> you know, small pieces that now, you that level of bliss all the time. Let me read this passage from the Bible okay. and related to what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. It says here, that is, to them, the prophets, it was revealed that not to themselves, but to us, they were ministering the things which now have been reported to you through those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit. Sent from heaven things which angels desire to look into. See, there's a, even the Bible revealed it, there's a, there's a curiosity. What verse is it? That was 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 12. Thank you. There was, there's a curiosity. Um, that the angelic order has about God's relationship to humanity. Right. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the angels study us mm -hmm. to right. understand God. Mm -hmm. We study them yeah. to understand God. Right. That we are all creations of God, yeah. and therefore, in a sense, your children learn about your love by seeing how you relate to your children, the babies. Mm -hmm. And the babies learn about the parent by watching how not only that you relate to them, but also how you relate to their older siblings. Mm -hmm. So this is this seems to be a kind of a cosmic relationship, a cosmic growth and understanding that is happening in the universe. It's just interesting when I read uh, what Dr. Gibson wrote in this book, I immediately began to remind me of that number one that God through His Son took on human, the likeness of human flesh. Mm -hmm. In other words, God came mm -hmm. down so we can go up. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what's happening here. I thought that was very important. Anybody have, you have anything else anybody want to say about this particular uh, conversation? Um, or well, this particular chapter, you know, chapter 20. There's something else uh, well, we want to yeah, talk we about. we got to go through a yeah. lot in chapter 28. But yeah. um, I think the other thing that... Um, when the creator told Roder that he had a, 
a secret that he was going to tell him, you know, mm, that yeah. about the fact he said, I'm the only person in the universe that knows how to control reality. Yeah. I'm the only person that knows all of the laws of reality, even the ones that do not exist. <laughs> if anyone else even comes close to figuring that out, then I'm out of a job. <laughs> And the enemy that you are preparing to face, Leazar, is dangerously cro close to discovering the keys to this secret, and he cannot allow that to happen. Wow, wow. So um, that's a very that's a very powerful idea. Um, the yeah, idea. We'll come back to that point at the end of the book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, you know, kind of. Yeah. Well, don't don't tip it off yet. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> yeah. But. Um, uh, I think another point that is important, uh, Rodaire asked a question, said, you're the creator of heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. Why not just remove the threat from existence? Mm -hmm. yeah, right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Why not just kill him? Because mm -hmm. he, you know, he's the creator, he can just do away with him. Yeah. Why do you think, uh, what's the answer to that, to that question? What's the answer to that question? Mm -hmm. Why does the creator not just step in? People ask that question all the time. You know, well, if God is all powerful and all loving, why don't he just stop the the evil in the world. You know, why even allow uh, an entity like Satan and the demons just do what they have done? Because he said there's a, a persistent perfection. In other words, there's a balance that he has created. There's a balance that he's created of darkness and light. And if he took out all the dark, it would throw More everything, it would throw the perfection off, mm -hmm. right? Let me find this particular. Yeah, uh, let me find this particular quote. Just the one you're saying. Yeah. If I, too, often avoid the consequences of my own judgment. Mm -hmm. Now that's a very important thing to think about, and I want people to, uh, who are who are listening to us, to really think about that. That by divine decree, whatever is happening in the created order, it was by divine decree. It was God's original choice. So these are the consequences of, of creation, of the decision to create. This is the consequence of I'm talking about God's karma mm -hmm. to maintain that balance, action. These are the consequences of God's choice mm -hmm. to allow humans and angels to have free will. Mm -hmm. So whatever, so whatever is happening in the universe, if it hadn't been for that original choice of the Creator to create, to create what I would consider the, the the most perfect world, whereby people have people have to choose to create, the choice to create, the decree to create, and the decree to give, to to create, whereby to allow the creation to have choice. In doing that. We create karma, but our karma is created because God's first choice allowed it to happen. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, this is where the concept of grace comes in, that balances itself uh, with karma, and that, I mentioned before, that the arc of the moral universe bends toward justice. That goes back to your point that you're making. The arc of the universe bends toward justice. In other words, this is the grace of God that though things get dark, right. they are not too dark, or things get bad, it's not too bad mm -hmm. for God, for the Creator. I thought that's a you know very interesting uh, point. And if like, and like you said, um, if He did interfere with His original order, it would cause uh, the power would pass from me into another. Mm -hmm. So, so in other words, um, I guess you may say God in His sovereignty, the Creator in His sovereign decree, is limited, if you will. That's why I, I don't like that word. But He pays. He pays. In other words, He plays out His original choice and does not interfere with His own word. The word will not return. The word that created, the words of power that created reality will not return empty or void. They will achieve what it was purposed to do. Mm -hmm. And therefore God does not get involved because he knows in the end 
it's all going to work out. Okay, so let's move on. Let's begin to look at, so enters into the home, another fella, his name is Bowen. Right. So. And he and the creator know each other and they sit down and have a conversation. And uh, Rodere and Dr. Gibson go ahead and leave there at the house with Miss Kathy. Look at Miss Kathy. So Miss Kathy is here in the house and with Bona. <laughs> but Bona is kind of a, a mask. Right. But it, she understands though that there's something special about him because yeah. he's gotten through all of these protective wards the and past the angels, mm -hmm. right, and all those things that they have there. So it's something. What is that something? You mm -hmm. want to go and share with everybody? What is Mika? No. Not really? No. Well, no, I don't mean, but he has another name. No, that's Bona's name. That's the what creator. What's your name? Uh, the creator of the dragon order, the green dragon order. No, the creator told Bona to call him Tigers. Right. How you pronounce that name? Tigers. Tigers. So the creator's name is Tigers. That's interesting. That's Tigers. What he said for him and right. and therefore Bone and, and, and Tigers are left up to do a they got a deal they're working out. Right. So we're not gonna talk about So that's what you don't you want you don't yeah. talk about that now. Right, yeah, that's the, that okay. ends that part of it. Now we go to Liaison. Liaison. All right, right, go ahead, you can take it from there. Um well I think one of the things that's interesting about this first part as it um starts to describe Liaison then it goes back to what you were talking about um, a few minutes ago about the angels studying and higher beings studying us. Mm -hmm. And in this little section, it kind of brings up the um, some of the more human traits and qualities of some of these higher beings. The so liaison, I'm assuming, liaison is a dragon, right? He's a monster. Liaison is a and he angry. has made himself into, um, I guess, a, a human form because during the time that he was Gerald, mm -hmm. he got to like, you know, even though he said he couldn't stand the smell of humans. But he mm -hmm. loved the taste. Yeah, well, he flesh. liked it. Yeah, he, he liked it. Yeah, that's yeah, let's hope he wasn't eating people while he was down here visiting. But, um, He's a cannibal. Well, not really, because he's a dragon, so oh, he wasn't yeah. really eating. Yeah, he was eating people. That's a cannibal. But, uh, yeah, it did say he liked to eat a lot of stuff, though. Angels. He mm -hmm. said angel flesh was the best. <laughs> but he um, liked human things, women. He liked, liked human women. Okay. That was one of the things. And so he had all of these dragon females. He had all of these dragon females who were his consorts who mm -hmm. he had turned their forms into human female forms. Mm -hmm. So I eat entertainment. Them. No, he was <laughs> not. <laughs> nah, I'm not. just joking. We're going to tell you they entertainment. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. He was kind of freaky. <laughs> right. But some of the things, this chapter really, as during this part and as it goes into the battle, it really tells you all of the things that are out there that you can learn how to do. Like, what do you mean? Um, like he said that, um, that his main consort, she was trained in the art of touch and whisper. So that all she had to do was touch him and whisper something in his ear and she could take him to a totally different place, you know, in his mind to relax him, mm -hmm. he said, after wars and things like that. And then as we get on further in the book, there are a lot of other, you know, practices. So you're telling me that, that the female dragons of Liaison, his women, um, were able to take the war out of him or help him to relax after great wars. Right, that's what he said. Okay, okay. Well, that's one of the, that's one, the, that's one of the duties. That that's one of the duties of women. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's what she said that they took the took them as young girls and taught them, you know, how she had been trained from childhood in the art of touch and submission. That's like a geisha girl. 
That's like one of those temple prostitutes. No, I think a she sex did. worker. I think she was a little. That was, this was a little more advanced than just a. Um, she was a priest. A geisha. She had a. She had some magic to back it up. Well, she had, had I agree. Magic and power. Now so, I, the reason I'm, I'm just messing with you, but the reason why I'm saying that because uh, in history, one of the reasons why they had these uh, temples and they had like these female priests because when soldiers would come back from war, before they would go back to their community, before they would go back home, they stopped at the, at the temple priest, priestess uh, chamber, mm -hmm. and she would take the war out of the soldier so he wouldn't go back home with blood on his consciousness, on mm -hmm. his hand. And I think that when I look at the, the fact of uh, the violence in a lot of our communities, um, you know, black on black crime, male on male crime, or whatever, it, it indicates to me that there's a lot of uh, emotional tension, sexual tension, uh, lack of creative expression uh, going on among a lot of young men, a lot of people in our community, because we don't have, we don't use the means, I guess they, women are not using the means that God gave them, the spirit, the soul, obviously the body, to know how to take war out of men. Right. Would y'all have a Y'all have an agreement with that or a disagreement with that as women? I mean, do y'all, I mean, the point is that your job is to take the war out of a man. Well, I'm not saying y'all been taught. I'm assuming that you hadn't. But do you have a problem with the calling, the mission, the purpose? No, I don't think I would have a problem with it. Mm -hmm. And you, Miss Shelley? <laughs> okay, we'll move on from there. Uh, let's talk about this battle. <laughs> let's talk about this battle. And so, um, well, the battle is a battle, you know, because uh, Leazar, he, 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 uh, he ready to take on the world. One thing I thought about when Anshar and Rodare uh, and Dr. Gibson and others were involved in this cosmic battle, this Star War, you know, these are, these are Star Wars, Angels of Stars, Star Wars. Um, is that one point that got me was when they, some of the, uh, I think Anshar put a shot on Leazar and split him in half. Mm -hmm. And everywhere his blood went. Well, um, you just skipped to the end of the battle. <laughs> well, I mean, I didn't know if y'all want to go that deep into a war. I didn't know well, that. I mean, uh, go ahead. No, I mean, you go ahead. You go ahead. <laughs> I just, that's the part that I liked. Well, I mean, there were a lot of things, like I was saying, ahead, that happened before that. that, you yeah. know, all the different practices they were using. The, okay, you want to put the words of power. Well, the fact that they were doing different words of power to fight against each other, um, The they were using, um, you know, these psychic. swords and these psychic powers. Yeah, they were using psychic powers. They were creating things. You know, they're all of the things that recently we've been talking a lot about, about how to create something from nothing, you know. Mm -hmm. And these were the things that they were trained in as they were going into battle. You know, you know, you know that reminded me of when I was reading that? Mm. The Green Lantern. Okay. Did y'all ever see the Green Lantern? I have. Yeah. You know, so you know, watch it. Uh, and how he would, the, the, the guy that was training the young man learn how to fight, how he would use his imagination. And oh. he, would create a, he would create a weapon out mm -hmm. of his imagination. That's right. kind of what you're talking about. Yeah, it is. They were, you know, they would come up with these weapons, how when one of them would get injured, then, you know, they slip into a, another slot of space and time, mm -hmm. you know, to have the time to heal themselves. You can imagine now this this only took like a couple of pages for this battle, but the way it sounded, it seemed like they were fighting for a long time. It also reminds me you've seen those those um it's kind of a dragon animation. It's kinda of like those Japanese cartoons mm -hmm. where um I can't think of the name of the, the, the figures, but they would use they would fight they would fight each other but they would use fire and water. Dragon Ball Z. I think it's it. Oh, or are you talking about, you talking about the last, the, what is it, Avatar? No, no, this, these are cartoons. The last Airbender. And, 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 and these, um, these. Think what? The, yeah, last, the Airbender. last Airbender. Avatar, the last Airbender. Little. That one too, but it's cartoon. Yeah, that's and, and, oh, is it? I don't know, I don't watch it. But anyway, these, these, uh, <laughs> these, are, but no, I'm talking about this particular one, uh -huh. where these, uh, these kids have these, uh, 
the, the, these kids and these they're, they're, it's like a Japanese type of uh, animation mm -hmm. where these kids imagine weapons that they're shooting and you know shooting at each other and everything. It, they, I think they even have computer games like that. Mm -hmm. You know, but it just reminded me of the type of uh, creative imagination that they're using. Uh, uh, fire and water and other type of the four elements. They're actually using the four elements and maybe a fifth element to conduct war between one another. Right. So you really, at this high, at this high level of battle, you really got to be advanced. Yeah. You know, right. because they're using like you know they're creating uh, like bubbles and like you said they're finding areas in space that they slip into, mm -hmm. and they come back and they they they're using these gestalts. They're using the power from all each other to create like a. Uh, Scion, uh, how do you call it? PSI, we not see. Psionic. Psionic, which is mental. Mm -hmm. And the truth of the matter is, is that there are certain, um, on Tybro, uh, I can't think of the exact thing, but Dr. Gibson actually has, no, no, that's on, it's, it's on Tybro, you can buy it, where he talks about this aspect of your consciousness or your brain mm -hmm. that is psionic. And this is, and we have that power too to tap into that and create mm -hmm. uh, psychic weapons. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that was, you know, up until that point, that was how, because Patricia and Kalia were helping um, Anshar with the with that part of the battle. Mm -hmm. Rodare and Dr. Gibson hadn't gotten there yet. Oh, okay. And, okay. and um, you know, Patricia and Kalia didn't have that level of strength that, you know, Anshar had, had, of course. So and they had, had, drank, to, had, had drunk the uh, elixir, yeah, and he had restored yeah, himself, he had gotten himself mm -hmm. to back to his power. So they had to use, you know, their other abilities and strength to overpower these men who they said were the first men they fought were five times the strength of a human man. So it was like each one was like fighting five men, right? You know, and this, these women fighting, mm -hmm. you know, so. It was a it was a tough battle, but like you said, then then uh, I think it was there were a lot of human traits in this part that these higher beings were displaying because it got to the point where when Leazar told Anshar, he said, "Oh, you fought your women." Yeah, yeah, that's a good <laughs> he point. He said, "You fought your women yeah. to fight for him." Yeah. Yeah. and Anshar was like, "Nah, I ain't bring my women. Yeah. I'm gonna put them over here. Yeah, I don't need them. It's me and you." Yeah, I'm gonna put them over here yeah. in a bubble, and it's just gonna. Be yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I thought that was funny. <laughs> you got your woman fighting for you, <laughs> and I can are... imagine Patricia was like, "Yeah." Yeah, I'm, you better leave him alone. I just got him back. <laughs> yeah, you know, we talk about these are human emotions, but yeah. they're just universal emotions that even angels feel. You know, and this is these are just traits that come with um, fighting. You know? Right. Now, you want to go into the whole thing about when Aunt Charlotte and I got to fighting? Well, no, that's the part you were excited about. So right. You can go ahead. Okay. And, and, and so Anshar, <laughs> and to let you know, Anshar and Leazar Le got to fighting, and and Anshar hit him with something that split him in half. And what happened was, I forgot the number, the, the uh, how many, a drop of blood turned into, he just like, he, um, he, he just turned into a clone of him, made these multiple clones of this dragon. These became an army of elder dragons. And that mm -hmm. created a serious problem. Mm -hmm. Because Anshar could not fight all of them. So enter in Dr. Gibson and, and Rodare. And Rodare. Absolutely. So they come in and take on the fight. And um, and so they're battling. This is the celestial Star Wars. Chum, 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 chum. You know, and they're battling one another. You gotta give you gotta you gotta, you gotta have sound effects, y'all. <laughs> I mean, what's the point? You can't just you can't have a silent movie in this, yeah, so I have yeah. to provide, you know. <laughs> and so, um, how did they? Uh, I forgot. How did they? How did they end up uh, defeating all those uh, little liaisons? Um, they realized that if they, you know, kept chopping them up, then they were just going to keep making more right. of them. So they had to like completely destroy them. And so again, they started using the words and came together and 
you know. They, they connected all their silent powers together? They connected, yeah. Dr. Gibson, Rodier, and Anshar came together, made a circle. It formed a, a bubble and, you know. Kind of like we do when we close church. We, we create a circle. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so they, um, you know, created something so that they would be able, well, after they made the bubble, the bubble started to grow. Mm -hmm tens of thousands, and there were about 10,000 dragons, so tens of thousands of gatherer angels mm -hmm. came out. And so then they had their own army. Right. So they created an army. That's right. And they created an army of their own, which that's a um, scripture in the Bible too. Was that? It? When, um, the, when he was telling him that they were, you know, the army was around them and they were outnumbered. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's in uh, I, don't, I don't know the verse. It's in Second Kings, but that's where um, they discovered that um, there was more angels for us right. than there were armies against us. Right, there were angels around them that they couldn't see, mm -hmm. and so the angels came and they destroyed the dragons. Boop, 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 boop. And so the threat is over. The dragons and the Azar and all his army are destroyed, mm -hmm. and there's peace in the galaxy. Mm -hmm. Maybe. <laughs> so we go back now to uh, we start coming to the close, wrapping it up. We uh, look at um, back to Gibson's house. The Gibson's house, where Bona and the Creator Tychus are still sitting down having a conversation. And what is the plan? The plan. Looks like the creator wants to go to another level. Looks like the creator wants to exchange spots. And Miss Kathy says what? You can do that? Yeah, yeah, she says she says, What do you mean holding that position? Not just anybody can uh can be God. Mm-hmm. And she asks she says the position of creator is an office, a choice. And the creator says, yes, and I must be getting back to, well, this is the creator Bona now mm -hmm. saying this because the creator Tigers has said, you know. I'm out. Yeah, he's like, you know, I've been working for five million, five billion? Five, five billion, billion. Yes. He said, I've been working for five billion years. I'm going to go do some gardening. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to another, he's going to another world. Right. And, and now uh, he's going to turn the creatorship over to Bona. Bona. Right. So I let you know, bump, go, ahead, go ahead. Oh no, I was just gonna say the interesting thing about that to me, when you go back and about when the creator was talking about if somebody got to that level, they could take his spot. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, now imagine if somebody like Leazar takes that spot in his God. Okay, but the, the, <laughs> because there are going to be obvious differences because Bona yeah. said there are some things that I want to be able to do. Which is? You know, well, he didn't say what it was. He just said there were some different things that he'd been wanting to do with, what do you think he with creation. Because he said he wants to, he wants to, he, said, he says, and he says, uh, yes, the favor. What is it this time? In suffering, hunger, peace among all nations? That wasn't it. Bona didn't want that. He said, bring him back. I don't know. Bring who back? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to tell you what I interpret this. I think this was setting up for the sequel that we're waiting on, Dr. Gibson. I know it's a sequel. <laughs> well, I'm going to put that I'm going to tell you what I think. I think they want to bring somebody like Liaison like back. I mean, there has to be a balance. Notice, he did not want to end suffering, hunger, and have peace among all mankind. Mm -hmm. Because maybe that's not the way. Maybe you have to have duality. Maybe you have to have contrast. In other words, in order for you to know joy, you got to know sorrow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm not no. trying. I don't know. We're waiting. I mean, that's the that's the, the book, uh, hint, first hint. darkness part two, I guess. You know. Hint to hint, Dr. Gibson. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, the point here is this: is that what I find is interesting is that someone can become creator. The position of being creator is one of choice. Right. Now what that's saying to us that each we talk about this but we really haven't really fully 
realize what we are saying is that each one of us has the power or the potential to become God. Right. Let's just break it down. Each one has the power and potential to become a planet, to become a sun, to become a galaxy. Mm -hmm. Because it says we jump from one degree of perfection to, to another, another until there is nowhere else to go except to become created. And so this is the means by which people can perfect their perfection. These series, these stages of evolution of growth. That's the way I look at it. Right. We can move on from there. Um, and then finally as we come to mm -hmm. Uh, the close. Obviously, there's some work to be done between Anshar and Patricia. Right, because during, you know, with all this fighting going on, they've had you no know, opportunity to talk about the fact that she now remembers him and her past lives, and he remembers her and all that, and mm -hmm. you know. And so she has this thing with her sister Salvina, mm -hmm. and and mm -hmm. looks like uh, she loves her sister and she wants her sister to be a part of her life. And she loves Anshar. So what happens here? Um, well, you just want to sum up the rest. Yeah, just sum it up. Pretty much, um, Melvina or Patricia goes back um, to where she was living with Salva and the old man and the dogs. And we find out that the dogs that were there were actually gatherer angels who well, had gotten the first darkness. Right. And that was uh, Anshar's way of kind of protecting them and keeping them there around him. Mm -hmm. um, and so Salva, of course, is happy to see her sister and she's been there just her and the dogs all this time in this um, realm or whatever. And Melvina, uh, Patricia, tells Salva that she wants her to go back with her um, into the human world right but she tells her you know to go back with me you have to be reborn mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm gonna take you back and you're gonna be reborn as my daughter yep now <laughs> my question about that was how did Patricia know that she was gonna have a child she was well is it that regardless of when she had the child it was going to be salvaged regardless of how right. long it took and i think also at the same time all the stuff she's been through uh being seeing her form in the sun learning all the words of power her psychic abilities had increased and so she was entering back into the world of third dimensional form and she was letting her know that this is the way we can be together. But how is she going to have a baby? she got to have a man. she got to have some form of, you know, relationship. Right, and so Anshar has gone back to, everybody's back, you know, where they're supposed to be. Roder is at his manor, and Kalia is there, and the young boy who they met during the battle who had come to help fight uh, yeah. Liazar. Ryan, 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 Ryan. Ryan. He, um, they let him stay with them at the manor, and so Kalia has somebody to play fighting with now. Right. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Anshar, Anshar is still, um, you know, getting better, taking the elixir, healing himself, right. and living in a house, the mm -hmm. angel, living mm -hmm. in the house with regular people. Mm -hmm. And he and Patricia are still feeling that pull for each other. And eventually, Patricia, I guess, couldn't take it no more. And she told him, you know, that's, I want you, got to have you. He told her, you might die. And mm -hmm. she said, that's okay. That's she right. said, then I will die making love to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and But she didn't die. Six months later, she is pregnant with a daughter mm -hmm. that they will name Salva. And... Um, you know, the interesting thing about the way that chapter ends because Patricia uh, says she still feels uh, something that's incomplete and she calls her, her new homegirl on the phone, Kalia, and tells her, I want you to help me become a mortal. And Kalia tells her, I thought you would never ask. <laughs> now she got a friend for life. 
that's the like, that's the real meaning of a friend for like real. when you call me one day and tell me girl yeah I'm yeah, but she wants to become more. immortal because she yeah. wants the whole <laughs> she wants uh her daughter Salvina and her friends Kalia you know they don't want to go through death yeah they want to stop and you know she want to be immortal so she can stay with her man <laughs> okay let me just pull let me put it let me just put in a spiritual word here because that's the whole point of getting out the wheel of samsara, the wheel of samsara, it is break get out the cycle of birth and death, and become immortal. That's what she really wanted. It ain't got nothing to do with just no man. I'm sorry, no, you probably you're probably right because I, I was in, I think that was her motivation. Yeah. That was her motivation. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. I agree with you. I'm just playing. Now let's get back to these ants and these and, beetles. Right, and, <laughs> Cause it comes back down. And to so this story. as the story as the story began and and as it ends, you know. And I guess it comes back to that, you know, there was a battle on the on the higher scale and on Earth, and there's a battle. That's in above, the, so below. And there's a yeah. battle in the yard. There was a battle with the between the ants and the beetles and, and Miss Kathy's ants, roses. And, right, and the bees and all that kind of stuff. Right. And so they made deals. They, you know. You you do, you do this. You take care of this for me. I'll take care of this for you, and and it all and, comes. And I believe problem. in the beginning, I think Dr. Gibson had promised uh, the ant, the beetle, the beetles. Excuse me, the beetles, the beetles. Ray, uh, Ray, that if you take care of these ants, mm -hmm. I will bring you some flowers that you can eat on or something. Yeah, because he's been eating Miss Kathy's Kathy rose flowers. bushes. Yeah. So Miss Kathy is going to plant them their very own rose bush. That they can chew on. Just for them to eat. That's right. Everything wants to eat. <laughs> Angels, yeah. humans, ants, mm -hmm. beetles. And everybody makes contracts and wants to have peace. Mm -hmm. But we got to learn how to get along together. Each order looks like the other order. It's just on a small order mm -hmm. or a bigger order. Mm -hmm. So if you can understand one level, you can, the principles of that order help you understand the next level. Yeah. Right. And as the story ends, Dr. Gibson gets a call on his phone. And who's this? Who and is it's Rodare. And what's going and on? And he says, I think the army of ancients is on the move. They're headed directly for Earth. I've already set up a meeting with the Celestial Court and the Demiurge. Would you care to join me? <laughs> the end. Now, when you think that Dr. Good enough to tell Miss Kathy about, you know, what the phone call from O'Dare, what do you think Miss Kathy did? She just... <laughs> Not she, again! You know, I think Miss Kathy probably <laughs> she may she may have done that, and then she just went on in the room and started getting stuff together. Yeah. And <laughs> Look, y'all, this has been very exciting to go through the first darkness. I really enjoyed going through it the second time. I got a lot more out of it. Right. Apparently, um, all of our consciousness has has expanded by what by listening by uh, talking and studying this. What about you guys? Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, I think like we said when we first started reading the book, that reading it from the first time it was just, you know, a novel. Like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, what's going to happen next? But mm -hmm. now it's like, I know what that is, you know. Right. I've heard about that. I've studied that. We've talked about that. Dr. Gibson has taught that. Mm -hmm. This is not, you know, it's where it takes it, like you said, from science fiction. Two science facts. Right. Yeah. We got a chance to go into Dr. Gibson's home, see his study, to see how he operates. We got a chance to uh, see him drive and, and see him work and everything. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. I appreciate him for writing this book, expanding us in our understanding of the spiritual world, preparing us how to become more divine, to accept our divinity. I think that's what I think that's what the intent of this this book is doing, to give us a glimpse of the similarities and the contrast that we have uh, with the angelic world, the spiritual world, and the human world, and even the insect world. Mm -hmm. I think that's very ingenious. Um, we're going to come, we're going to take a break for Christmas and New Year's. Um, we definitely appreciate all of you who, who kept up with us and we went through this, uh, this book. Um, if you want to support the work that we're doing, we encourage you to uh, go to PayPal, our 
email connection to the PayPal account is Mind of Grace. That's G R A C E. Mind of M I N D of Grace G R A C E P B at gmail.com. And we appreciate any support that you can give us so we can continue to do this type of critical reading and study um, uh, to cause everybody to grow. And we thank all of you who have been very supportive in terms of your words of encouragement, your financial support to this ministry as we uh, continue to do our work here. Thank you so much for your help. I, wanna, I definitely want to thank Shelly for her work in terms of uh, filming this and editing the conversation. Thank Florence, thank uh, Juan and Christy for their participation. I want to thank Kim for her participation in these uh, Conscious Book Club readings. We're going to come back on January the 12th uh, in the new year 2014 and the book that we're going to focus on is by a good friend of mine named Kelly Larson. Her book is entitled Keys to Unlocking Your Inner Power. This is a phenomenal book. I'm already reading it almost at the end of it, but we want you to go out there and purchase a book and purchase it from Amazon and uh, Amazon.com and begin reading it uh, during the Christmas and New Year's break. When we come back, we're going to get started with this book, and this book is going to really take you more didactically or in, in a more of a uh, uh, organized teaching form. That's not going to be in the genre of a novel. It's going to be basic, uh, a pedantic type of teaching form that is going to instruct us on words of power, power of thought, the nature of the soul, so many things. It's a wonderful book. Again, it's by Kelly Larson. It's called Unlocking the Keys to Your Inner Power. And so we look forward to joining us then on January the 12th. And until then, have a Merry Christmas. Have a wonderful New Year. And we'll see you then. Everybody say bye to everybody. Mm -hmm.